My background is actually as a as a technical person like all of you. I used to work for the Rwandan Ministry of Finance 12 years ago, helping the government write policies and negotiate with the IMF and all this kind of stuff. And then, you know, I decided to go and hang out with the tech people, the cool people, the guys starting businesses, the, the entrepreneurs, the ones like really pushing new visions and new things for the continent. And it's kind of a tradition amongst the entrepreneurial communities that we work with that when we are engaging in an event like this, we do an energizer to bring everybody together. What do you guys think? Are you ready to do some kind of a little energizer to come together as a room? <laughs> no, so if you don't, you can sit down. But I would, I would recommend that you stand up because what we're gonna do is we're gonna adopt a power pose, all right? And it's not an aggressive power pose, it's a powerful power pose, right? I don't know if you guys know anything about like martial arts, but you know, there's a position where you're like, you go with your hands, your fists at your, at your hip, like this, right? So you got your, your feet really strong to the side, and you get, your, you get your fists here on the side, and we're gonna do like a karate noise, all right? But the point is that position is like really strong because it's a, it's a position of strength, you're really grounded in the floor, and then, you know, if you need to be able to defend yourself, you can, right? But you're really there and you're like ready to, to do some collective action. So if I could ask everybody to stand up, we're going we're gonna to assume a power pose together. And then we're going to put our hands up above our head and really stretch our bodies out, get our spines as long as we can. All right, now we're going to go down and try and touch our toes. So bend, bend from the hip. All right, all right, now we're gonna go straight back up and we're gonna, we're gonna wiggle our hands a little bit. And then on the count of three, we're gonna adopt that power pose with the really strong karate noise, right? All right, one, two, three. Ah! All right, do you guys, do you feel powerful now? Do you feel, do you feel ready? All right, all right, everybody, you can take your seats again. You know, the... <laughs> So the, the reason for starting off with a little bit of a power pose this morning is actually because I actually think that we need to be powerful because the time really at the moment is quite urgent. The issues that are being faced are urgent. The questions of the next generation are being determined right now. And I think, you know, digital, as we talk about, presents lots of opportunities, but of course it also creates and presents lots of threats. So there's an opportunity for digital to, of course, facilitate inclusion, access, agency, democracy, accountability, but at the same time, we know that digital also reduces the cost for control, surveillance, authoritarianism. I don't know if anyone's familiar with the statistics from Eastern Germany, but the Stasi during that period of time in the 1980s actually had one spy for every 70 people. So that meant if you were a, if you were a you know, East German spy, you would need to have one person to be able to monitor 70 people. The reality is that with you know, these digital tools and these sort of personal surveillance devices that we carry around many of us, you know, an NSA agent in the United States can actually surveil millions of people. Right. Um, the same question is for questions around, you know, digital inclusion. We, we just celebrated National Women's Day yesterday. And of course, there's really clear risk that, you know, issues of patriarchy are actually extended into online space with this digital divide. And it's important for policy to actually address some of these questions. And it's important for policy specialists like yourselves uh, to play a really important role in that. You know, um, I've been working, as I mentioned, in the innovation space for quite some time. And I think it's typical for policy specialists, policy makers, experts to see the people that are affected by public policy in a way as the objects of which for which policy serves. And in fact, what deliberative democracy literature and theory is actually showing over the last 40 years is that you know, by engaging the people affected by public policy, you're actually elevating sort of an epistemic value, right? You can, 
you can understand the preferences of the people that are affected by public policy, and you can also understand their you know, familiarity with regulatory environments and everything else. So at the Innovation for Policy Foundation, so we've been working with innovation hubs actually across the continent since about 2000, the end of 2016, to start articulating a grassroots vision for digital transformation policies. So the idea being that you know, if policymakers across the continent and governments are trying to support youth employment, to support digital transformation, to support indigenous innovation, to increase tax revenue, then what if entrepreneurs actually could support them in this? What if we could you know, reframe you know, support and advocacy and all of these things into the positive, recognizing that governments and entrepreneurs actually want the same things? So what we did was we facilitated an event uh, very similar to this, in fact. And instead of having policy specialists and law experts like yourselves, we actually had a bunch of entrepreneurs sitting in these same seating arrangements. And we went around the room, we organized a, a world cafe, which is something that I think we're all going to be engaging in this morning. And the leaders of these innovation communities from across the continent, and as you can see up here, it's, it's pretty much reflective of uh, the majority of the continent, 45 countries are being represented in this policy manifesto. So we, we went around the room with these participants and they actually were able to articulate what they see as the key opportunities and challenges for digital transformation and to start articulating what their vision is for public policy. So in 2016, we started writing what we called a communique at the time. In 2018, we met again and we, we called it now a manifesto because uh, perhaps sounds a little bit more exciting than a communique. Um, but then in, uh, over the last year, we've actually been working on revising that document together with a group of uh, you know, particular leaders across the continent that we've formed into a group called the African Innovation Policy Task Force. So this is, uh, this is a list of some of the people that are here. You might recognize our dear friend Sheila Bergen from IHUB up in the front uh, as one of the task force members for the African Innovation Policy Task Force. And essentially the idea was, what if we brought together leaders across the continent that were diverse, that represented the, you know, the, the particularities of the innovation ecosystem across the continent, people from, for example, really VC intensive innovation spaces in Nigeria and Abuja, for instance, compared with you know, innovation hubs that are operating operating in northern Uganda with South Sudanese refugee communities, for instance, and bring all of these communities together to be able to co-create their vision for digital transformation. And this has resulted in what is now an online consultation. So the African Innovation Policy Manifesto is actually living online. You can find it at ifrapolicy.org slash manifesto. And the idea is actually to bring as many people as possible into co-creating a legal framework. It's important, as I mentioned, that you know, these key questions that are facing us at the moment around privacy, et cetera, that these questions are not resolved by experts. They're not imported. They're not, you know, there's, there's not an issue of all of these global corporate interests and global multilateral interests trying to impose a particular vision or policy environment onto the continent or onto particular countries on the continent, but that everyone works together to co-create and reflect on what this policy environment should be. So this policy manifesto is living online and you can find on the website, as I mentioned, we've actually designed together with a group of developers in Ethiopia, a consultation platform. Here we go, sorry, my clicker is a little bit slow. Um, so this, this manifesto is sitting on the internet. You can go online and you can actually rank different sections, you can comment on different sections of the manifesto, and you can even give dispositions, share, etc. So the idea is that we're trying to create an online platform, imagine like a Google Docs, but for public policy consultations to be able to leverage collective intelligence and get as many people as possible involved into the co-creation process as possible. So to make sure that the policies represent the maximum number of people, domain experts, you know, such as entrepreneurs, and also uh, legal professionals as well uh, in, in these policy in, in, uh, frameworks. So um, one more picture here. I mentioned uh, at the Academy on Saturday that we've developed Polly the Zebra or Polly Z for short. Polly Z is our persona for the uh, online policy consultation. So Polly Z actually helps to educate newcomers to the platform how public policy works, how the consultation works, and is also being deployed as a chatbot on Facebook and soon to be rolled out on WhatsApp and Telegram so that as many people across the continent can be engaged in the consultation process as possible. So all of that is to give you a sort of frame in which 
this you know, massive Pan-African consultation has been taking place and how you guys can involve yourselves and engage. And to also reflect on the fact that the, the format today is very similar to formats that have been used, that are being used, and that we hope will contribute into this very same document. And it, with that, I would like to welcome and introduce my dear friend and colleague, Sheila, from iHub in Nairobi, to talk a little bit about the, the task force. So please put your hands together for Sheila. <laughs> So basically what we are trying to do is to bring uh, different people within the innovation, entrepreneurship, and investment ecosystem across Africa to be able to make um, policies locally that could impact um, the different ways that they work. So currently how policy is um, created, at least to us, or what we feel is it, you know, other than public participation, which if you're not informed, you don't know, it doesn't necessarily or deliberately go to the people that it will affect. And we strongly believe that the future is co-created. So unless we work on policies with people that those policies will affect directly, then most often than not, we don't create policies that are perfect for those people, or at least ideal. And so some of the work that we've been, we've been doing with the with the task force um, has resulted in, in a startup act in, in Senegal. So it just shows you how important in even very, you know, I would call them, you know, new ecosystems in Africa, they are taking up this approach and it's making a great impact. And for us, we, we believe we need the legal expertise in, in creation of, of policies because Yes, it's good we're giving our insights, but we don't know how to craft them using legally. So, you know, when we go to governments, the process is much longer because we do not understand the language in, in crafting these things. And that's why this event, for instance, is very important because we feel it's bringing different players who are very vital in policy making together to just not, you know, network, but to also discuss very important issues like how can we work together on specific policies within specific sectors, and how can we involve government in that process as well. So we would like to welcome you to check out the consultation tool. It's online. Kindly give us um, feedback on, you know, especially um, digital rights, um, you know, um, intellectual property uh, in education as well. Um, we would, would love to hear what the legal sector thinks about that. And reach out to us as well. We'd like to work with you in different countries. We've been doing this in 14 countries now. Yeah, in uh, 14 different countries. We'll be having one in Kenya um, towards the end of this month, uh, we will reach out definitely to most of the people who will be here uh, to see how we can also work on probably a startup act or something like that. I know government is interested in, in doing this. They've been reaching out and we feel it's an opportune time for us to get involved as well in creation of those policies. So thank you so much.